Welcome to Gloria Day in St. Paul. I am Florence Stater and this hour we're going to be looking at the icons and the symbols of our church here in the nave. One of the first things that people will notice when they come into the sanctuary is that on each side of the church are pillars and there are seven pillars on each side. Seven is uh, found in the book of Revelation is especially prominent. Uh, there's, you know, the world was created in seven days. There's seven years, uh, seven stars, seven lampposts, um, seven seals with the book, seven steps here in this chancel, uh, seven pillars. And so, according to Revelation, it still is a mystery of what the significance of seven is, but it is important. Uh, this font is a relatively new addition to this church. Originally, we were using the one that came from the old, old church building, but this was uh, designed a, about 20 years ago. And on the front of it, we have carved in the marble a descending dove, which, in, which illustrates the uh, Holy Spirit. This can be moved if it's necessary, and if we wanted to, we could take out this bowl and we can polish it or use it um, in another manner, but usually we leave this right here. This is, this is the ultimate in understanding our, our role in the church, and that we are baptized in the name of Christ and we become his child. The symbols on the pulpit have, first of all, an open Bible that says, we shall abide in Christ. And this is done with paint and gold leaf on this one. Then we have around on this front part, the sunburst representing Christ. And in the center of it is the Cairo symbol for Christ. Above that, we see a pyramid, and those are designed to match the seasons of the church. Around the, on the other side, in the other panel, is the Ten Commandments, and we have those that the person abides in law and believes in Christ. In keeping with the tradition of the number seven and the mystery of it, you'll notice that there are seven steps leading to the altar. Three here, two at the next, and then the other two closer to the altar. You'll notice that the eternal light is always lit when you come into church. And this is part of our maintenance and our devotion to Christ. We always have this changed every week and that it's uh, part of our service. I'd like to share some of the symbols that are in the candelabra that were designed especially for this chancel. We have, at the top circle, we have the shell and the water in the hand for baptism. And then again, we have the Good Shepherd on the book, and we have the seven seals again on this particular unit. And that would be true for the other candelabra as well. And then we have a picture of the descending dove in the Holy Spirit. In pyramids, they have symbols also, and you'll notice that there are flat, white on white crosses that have been made, and they, they're prescribed in having five crosses for each plot. And this is, usually, usually there's three plots, but this is called the fair linen, and this was representing the burial plot. There are all kinds of stories of Christendom and one of the stories is how altars were developed. They were originally the burial place of the clergy of that particular church or, or cathedral. And as they added pastors to each of their services or to, to their staff, they all wanted a place at the table of the altar. And so they kept building altars bigger and bigger to accommodate all of the clergy that were there. So finally they had to come to a stopping point and said it's taking up more space than, than we have 
in the in the sanctuary or the chancel. And so that's how the length of the uh, altars were designed. Pyramids are an important part of the service since they indicate this church year. We have what we call office lights with the angels. One angel has closed eyes and the other has open eyes and the passages and their eyes were open to Christ. These are wood hand carved angels and they are covered with gold leaf. And closing out this part of the symbols are each of the crosses that you'll find here covered with gold leaf and the one that is above the painting. Then our last symbol on this altar is the serpent that has been carved into the marble representing evil. And Christ then is able to stamp out evil with, with the word of Christ. I stomped him to death. I think it's significant that we end our exploration of the symbols and icons of the church and we're at the baptism font again, along with the Paschal candle and the wall hanging behind us illustrating that the word and sacrament is very much in place as part of this building.